What's up, Airsoft Nation? We're at the Silverback booth here at IWA 2024. I'm here with Dennis, and you're showing me everything about the MDRX Micro. Yeah. And later in the video, we're showing you guys something about the Tech 41. There's some new lineup. There's a new sports line you were telling me. Yes. But let's start with this system. Okay, so let's speak about the external first. Uh, this is a 10 and a half inch barrel, so it's quite short. Internally, it's a 330 millimeter inner barrel. Because it's bullpup, you still get yeah. a lot of so it's barrel length. Still quite long, it's from here to here. And in fact, the inner barrel is even going a little bit inside the... Um, ah, you can see, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you cannot see it all from the, way the side, but from the, the front edge, you yep. can see it, yes. We use this side also because it's the same size as some of our TAC-41. So for us, it's a bit standardized for everything. And it was the maximum we can put inside. You have the new uh, handguard. Uh, that is a short one, the Micron and Guard. You have the short barrel, you have the new handle system that is different from the previous one. It was uh, more tight, but more fragile. And Desert Tech designed uh, the new one to be more sturdy. So we also changed the new version. Absolutely. Uh, you have a new mother brake also, that is the 5.56 mother brake. And what people was expecting also with this version is the 5.56 magazine and the 5.56 adapter. So as you can see inside, uh, we have two uh, skates. The, you see the red part inside? Yeah, what is that? This is to adjust... Uh, Positioning. The... Yes, exactly. Because the problem with M4 magazine, it's uh, every brand has a tiny bit different. Yeah. And sometimes with your gun, you will have some magazine that fit well and some not so much or will move too much inside the gun. So with this, here, you can see... There's no wobble. Yeah, I, I was feeling it earlier that it's like very tight in there. Because it's adjusted for this, this magazine. Here, you have some parts with different thickness. And by changing the thickness of this part, you can make the magazine more or less tight inside the magazine. So and then they just clip in? Uh, it's like Lego in a sense? Yes, you cut it here. You open this one, slide it out, put it inside and re-put inside. By changing the thickness of this part, you can adjust the backlash in this direction. And we can also put or remove some washer under the feeding tube to adjust in this direction. And then you have good feeding. In theory, I will not say 100% of the M4 magazine on the market will be compatible because it's impossible, yeah. but most of the magazine will be compatible. And this one, it's a production, okay, it's a pre-production uh, magazine. This one has no texture yet. So this is a production uh, 762 magazine. And this one is a pre-production, there is no texture, but basically we'll have the same aspect. I understand. And that would be our own. Magazine. So this is um, used in the big boy version of this? Yeah, this is the 762 version. And this one oh, is it's the got significantly more weight for sure, but obviously it's bigger. So but here you have the 16 inch version. So this one is using a 420 millimeter barrel. You have the long and guard, you have the big magazine, but internally, except that, but the same gun. Yeah, well, I mean, it's so impressive that you have a 420 millimeter barrel length but it's still such a compact gun. And then for the internal, uh, there is some change, as I say, on the handle, but the bigger change is for the gearbox. So I will show you the gearbox. The bigger change, obviously, it's electronic. Uh, we have some trouble with the first generation of electronics. Some was burning. Voltage protection wasn't as efficient as we want. So for the new version, we work with T238, that is a brand specialized in this kind of uh, development. Yeah, makes sense to work they with They make them. some tracer and stuff like that. This one is fully programmable by the trigger, so there is no app. We want to keep on something simple, but uh, basically you break open the gun, uh, you plug your battery, keep the trigger pull for five seconds, then you enter in the programming mode, and then you can adjust many options. You can adjust the shooting mode to get some burst, some full auto, binary, safe, something like that. You can adjust the DMR cooldown, mm -hmm. uh, the rate of fire. Delay between the shots? Uh, yes, for example, to avoid people who are spamming trigger. You can uh, reduce the rate of fire electronically. You can adjust the pre-cocking also. There is a sleep mode also to reduce the idle consumption for the battery. So if it's not used for one hour, it turns off? It's turned off. And then you will have to press the trigger one, you make beep, 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 and you go back in a normal it's mode. It's a cool feature, actually. That's avoid, if, for example, if you're on a mid sim game for five hours and your gun is just in your backpack, it will just go in sleep mode and stop to use the battery. And that's also for people who forget the battery inside the oh, gun. Oh yeah, we have that a lot. Leave it at home. With this kind of technology, if you don't have a device like that, that may drain your battery and kill it. So yeah. that's really a plus. You can also reduce the active braking. If you want to play with brushless motor, that may be useful. But honestly, we were anti nothing on brushless motor. You're not using brushless motor? No, we are using a standard one, but it's a really strong one. We didn't find a spring on the market. The gearbox cannot pull. You can put any spring on the market, the gearbox will run it. It's mostly DMR because in fact, the gearbox is bore up. It's, a, it's not a standard AEG uh, cylinder. It's much wider. What kind of power can you expect from the rifle? Out of the box? 
not so much because uh, the company is based in Hong Kong, we need to be below two joules. But with the bigger spring, you can get three or even more. I mean, I can see that it's a quick spring change system. If you want to take apart the gun, how easy yeah. is that? You do this. I see, perfect. And then you change the spring. That's pretty fast. That's pretty good, actually. This is same for the battery access. The battery is going at the top, it's an AK stick. Mm -hmm. So you would slide the battery here. Dennis was showing me that this is their CQB model. They set it up with lasers and lights and everything. And, but you're not running the barrel in here, right? No, no, but you can. You could, obviously, yeah. And um, this is an old generation silencer. But on the new generation silencer, we also have some barrel spacer. So if you want to put the inner barrel going through the silencer, but to avoid to have the inner barrel floating inside the silencer, we have this option. Of some stabilization. Barrel. That's a pretty cool setup, honestly. I kind of like this. Like, I don't know, it's like a... Very special design that you don't see a lot. And a lot of the bullpup rifles don't look way too cool. Some of them. And I feel this like this one has sci -fi a... sci-fi looking yeah, gun. Yeah, exactly. This is a cool it's look It's a ghost in it. the shell gun. There's something else that these guys are doing. Besides AEGs, you also are very much known for your sniper rifles that are sure. spring-powered. So how, let's have a look at those. This one was the first TAC-41 we released with a Macmillan-style stock and a long barrel. Then we released this one, the TAC-41 aluminium. This one as an aluminum chassis going from the front to the back. So this one is super compact, but same. On the TAC-41, everything is a family. You can remove the mag. This one was the first one we released. Basically, it's our mid-range uh, sniper. This one was the second one we released. And this one is, uh, let's say, our top-notch sniper in our catalog. Okay, yeah, I mean, it looks very good. This year, we are going to release this version. So this is the lead version, lead for light, but also for less option. It's really minimali minimalist gun for players who prefer to run. It felt very light, for sure. It is. And um, if you don't want to play under a ghillie suit and very static, if you prefer to cover your squad or something like that. It's a short gun, you need that. But I can see it's like all TDC. Is it, is it the hop-up adjustment or what is this? Um, this is a pin for the barrel al alignment. Ah. Because in fact, this gun has a quick uh, barrel change. If you do this, then you change the barrel just like that. And this pin is going inside this uh, That's this convenient. Lock. Locking it, in. I see, cool. It's a cool system. So can I just take this barrel and put that on there? You want to do it? I mean, if you, I mean, I can understand. We can look at it like that, yeah, but that's the whole point of it, yeah? And this one is coming with a Picatinny at the back, so you can change the stock to any. Yeah, there is a lot of Picatinny stock on the market. Cool. We're also going uh, going to release different stock for uh, for this gun. That's super nice. And then I saw that there's like a sports line as well. What's okay. the differences? This one will arrive on the market at around 335 uh, euro. That's a good price. That's a good price, but we have something better for the price. Because in fact, in our catalog, uh, if you compare to most of our competitors, uh, our gun are kind of pre-upgrade. Uh, everything is free CNC, the hop-up is free CNC, the spring guide is CNC, stainless steel with a fresh bearing. I mean, everything is high-end on this gun. Yep, I understand. But because of that, we so far, we cannot propose uh, a gun at an affordable price. So we decide also to release a sport line for the TAC-41. This is the same, but it's not the same. The receiver on this one is polymer. Hop-up unit is polymer. The spring guide is polymer. The hand cap is polymer. And what kind of price can we get from all these changes? This one will be 135 euro cheaper. 130, wow. Just from these couple, I guess this is probably expensive. The upper receiver part being this metal makes a big difference. This is extremely expensive, yes, for because sure. Because this is all CNC mill. Yeah, this is fully CNC. It's coming from an extrusion profile and then fully yeah. CNC. That will cost you, I understand. But costly. Same for the cylinder. This one is stainless steel with a PVD coating. It's a vapor phase uh, deposition coating. Extremely expensive. I don't know. The cylinder on this one is a super high quality cylinder. And then this cylinder is what? Plastic? Because the this is a cover, it's not the cylinder. Oh, you can see it, okay. Yes. But also protect from the water. Uh, and uh, because this one was inject, it was better to get something uh, cover like that to make the receiver as straight as possible. Where our competitors are using some uh, very thin aluminium, this one is 30% thicker than a standard VSR 10 cylinder. So even on the aluminium one, you can put any spring on the market. That's fine. Try the weight. Oh yeah, you can really tell. This one for a spring uh, sniper rifle, it's the uh, lightest one on the market. It's below 1.7, it's a uh, 1.67 uh, kg. It's also nice for people who want to have a sniper as a backup. If you play with an AG, Sometimes you want to just have something that's above two joules, three joules, something like that. And, and this one, you can shots. drop it in your back, it's compact. What are these screws for? Is this for adjusting the trigger in some way? First one at the front of a trigger here. 
it's for the preload. So you can uh, preload the sear to have a release that will be lighter. Mm -hmm. And the cool. second is to adjust uh, the stroke of a trigger. Over travel? Yeah. In fact, it's the travel uh, until the wall. So you will have a free travel until the wall and then you press and after the wall you shot. So you can make it very short trigger pull yes. and very light. And also for this gun, uh, all of them can be converted to left handed. Okay, you just take off that and... You this one, you switch it in the opposite direction. The bolt handle is going here and there is one pin to change position. And then you can have a left handed. Nice a true design, left yes. Because this one, on the right handed, you are opening the bolt uh, counterclockwise. But on the left handed, you're opening the bolt clockwise. And everything is working with it's the cool same part. cool you're thinking of that. Looks like these guys really know what players are looking for in a sniper rifle. It's important to think about everyone. And some, some right-handed people also, they prefer to play left handle because they can keep your hand on the trigger. So not my cup of tea, but I can understand. E everyone's different. We are also going to release uh, the TAC-41 polymer in the sport version. So for people who prefer the classic look of a polymer and they want to have a gun as a lower budget, it will be also possible for the polymer sport. This is a TAC-41 polymer sport. I mean, the, 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 the weight is really good, actually. Because a lot of people that are not necessarily trained, like training, doing, doing workouts, whatever, it's probably a big factor to go out and play airsoft if it's too heavy. So that feels like something that you can spend a long time, even if you have a scope on it, to stand like this and I appreciate that you gave me the insights on all this. Thank you very much for giving us a tour of everything that you have to offer here at IWA. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and make sure you check out their channel, check out all the details about these different types of guns and make sure you sign back in for the rest of the coverage that we're doing for IWA. Thank you very much for having me, Dennis. I appreciate it. <laughs>